Tonight, former NSA lawyer says encrypting data is bad for business. Amazon is testing deliveries by taxi. And which messaging apps are the least secure? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 209 for Wednesday, November 5th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting snacks right to your door. Start snacking smarter with wholesome, delicious treats like honeycomb sunflower kernels. To get your complimentary NatureBox sampler, visit naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Speaking at Web Summit, which is happening in Dublin, Ireland this week, a former NSA general counsel member, Stuart Baker, warned that moves by Google and Apple and other companies to encrypt user data was more hostile to Western intelligence gathering than to surveillance by China or Russia. Baker said that encrypting user data had been bad business model for a company like BlackBerry. Now, of course, we know BlackBerry has downsized his business quite a bit in recent years and is now refocusing on business customers. Baker noted, quote, BlackBerry pioneered the same business model that Google and Apple are doing now, and that has not ended well for BlackBerry. Then again, it's coming from the NSA, so... Aren't they supposed to say that? Amazon's experimenting with taxi hailing app Flywheel to bring same-day deliveries to customers from distribution centers in San Francisco and Los Angeles, according to the Wall Street Journal. The cabs were reportedly loaded up with, quote, as many as 10 packages bound for a single zip code, paying about $5 per package for delivery within one hour. So why would Amazon go with taxis? Well, they're cheaper than courier services. And Amazon can not only decide which deliveries to bundle into a single cab versus sending out a package alone, but it also raises some questions for the delivery itself. Are the taxi drivers responsible for making sure that the packages are delivered and delivered intact? Do they have the right insurance? And again, on the flip side, Amazon deliveries could create an additional stream of income for cab drivers, some of whom have complained, as of late, of less fares due to the Ubers of the world and other taxi paling apps. Apple Pay was announced back in September, and now Ars Technica reports that Google Wallet, which launched way back in 2011, has had considerable growth in the last couple of months. Is there a correlation? A source tells Ars that weekly transactions have increased by 50%, and in the recent couple of months, new users are almost twice what they were compared to the previous month. Apple CEO Tim Cook has claimed that 1 million cards were activated on Apple Pay in the first 72 hours of the platform's launch. So could NFC, which is also the protocol used by Google Wallet, and contactless payment methods as a whole be benefiting overall? Well, it certainly looks that way. Earlier this week, we told you how an internal video message sent by Apple Vice President of Retail and Online Stores, Angela Arentz, pointed to a spring 2015 release for the company's Apple Watch. Today, French Apple website iGen.fr is reporting that pricing for the stainless steel Apple Watch may start at $500, and the gold Apple Watch's pricing could start between $4,000 and $5,000. Now, Apple already claimed on stage when the Apple Watch was announced that it would start at $350. That's probably assumed to be the price of the base aluminum model. The site also reports that Apple wants to release the Apple Watch by Valentine's Day 2015. And that is romantic. I love you. Here is a $5,000 watch. Digiday is reporting that Snapchat is in negotiations with media companies such as Comedy Central and Spotify and Vice for the upcoming launch of a new section of the app called Discover that would serve users' articles and music and video produced by these entities, according to people familiar with the matter. A mock-up of the Discover section, which was obtained by Digiday, shows some other companies that Snapchat may be talking to, including BuzzFeed, CNN, the Daily Mail, ESPN, National Geographic, and Vivo. Part of the Discover partnership reportedly will include original content created by those companies and possibly advertising revenue split agreements. Coming up later in the show, why were TV anchors hiding iPads behind their Surface 3 tablets during election coverage? Hmm. And up next, I will talk with PC World's Brad Charkis with, about which messaging apps are really, really, truly secure. Are there any of them? But first, let's thank NatureBox for sponsoring this episode of TN2. Right now, right this second, NatureBox is going to give you a chance to get their complimentary trial box of their most popular snacks 
and just pay $2 for shipping. Two bucks for an entire box of delicious Nature Box snacks. You don't want to you don't want to eat junk. That's the whole point of Nature Box. Nature Box knows that we all like to snack. We get hungry. You know, you get you stress eating, whatever it is. You don't want to eat candy bars. You don't want to eat potato chips. That stuff is bad for you. You want wholesome snacks. And NatureBox.com has hundreds of them. They have zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners, zero grams of trans fats, no high fructose corn syrup ever. You'll even find snacks without any added sugar, without any added gluten. Some people are gluten-free. NatureBox has you covered. So when you get hungry, grab some cranberry pepita crisps from NatureBox or an everything bagel stick or PB&J granola. I've had it. It is delicious. Start your trial today and get a complimentary sample box at naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, start snacking smarter at naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to NatureBox for the support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Brad Charkas, senior writer at PC World. Hello, Brad. Welcome back to TN2. Hey, thanks for having me again. Nice to see you. Well, it's very nice to see you as well. So let's talk about let's talk about messaging apps because more and more they're, they're sort of coming across as fairly insecure. Now, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, or EFF, looked at some popular messaging apps recently, iMessage and 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 Snapchat, and you know, that's the stuff that's 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 quite popular. FaceTime, BlackBerry Messenger, Skype. And what did they, you know, how, how are they rating them against each other and what did they find? Well, um, this particular study wasn't an in-depth look at, you know, nitty-gritty security details. It was more of an overarching look at uh, uh, policies and practices, basically. So it asked questions like, do you have end-to-end -end encryption? Can you know, can users verify your identity outside of the network itself using like hash keys or stuff like that? Um, if your hash, if your key is stolen, can you know people look at your previous messages, or you can only see your messages going forward? You know, just basic security details like that, policies and practices. And all of the basic securities, we we would hope that these messaging apps provide, but that's not always the case. So, which messaging apps were the big losers? Who flunked? Uh, well, actually, the ones that we all use most. <laughs> oh, <ones>. of course. <laughs> um, yeah, so tools like Facebook, uh, Google Hangouts, BlackBerry Messenger, Viber, all the big names, Snapchat, even the ephemeral, me ephemeral messaging, uh, you know, they all, you know, basically, they encrypt communications in transit, but they don't do anything else. So they all full-heartedly flunk this test. Now, of course, the EFF is, you know, it's its uh, the very nice thing about uh, the EFF is that this is all supposed to be passed along to consumers. So we we know, you know not only our rights, but, but you know, the kinds of uh, messaging apps and services uh, online that are good for us versus not as good for us. So if you say something like, hey, Sarah, Facebook Messenger isn't really very secure at all. Uh, Snapchat isn't as ephemeral as you thought it was. What, as a user, do we need to be concerned about? What, what, uh, how, how does our behavior change? Does behavior change? Um, well, these days it's very much in focus because of the Edward Snowden revelations. Um, you know, and privacy and security is always a good thing to have intact. It's, if, it's, if you can be more secure and more private, the better. Um, that said, uh, I wouldn't worry too heartily about all of a sudden people getting a hold of your Facebook messages or whatnot per se. But if someone is targeting you, these uh, particular apps that didn't rate as highly, they will be, you know, much easier to get your communications from, much easier to spoof your even identity and stuff like that. You know, there's uh, there, every few days I have somebody uh, in my Facebook feed, usually that I went to high school with that maybe isn't so technically savvy, you know, uh, posting Facebook Messenger is, is 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 saving all of our data and Facebook wants to do these terrible things. You know, and that's sort of one side of not exactly understanding how some of these services work. Right. But when a service like Facebook Messenger is clearly not built with the intent of keeping everything as safe and locked down and secure as possible, really. No, it's, made, it's, it's made for you to talk to your buddies. Exactly. So, you know, when it comes down to, hey, uh, you know, th th this is not the most secure tool. Well, what do people have to choose from, especially when they're not exactly sure what their choices are? 
Um, well, one company that actually did really well in this particular study is Apple. Its FaceTime and iMessage uh, applications uh, both scored really high. They each only missed on two criteria, one of which being, you know, preventing, uh, putting out the code for audit, which Apple's pretty much never going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and aside from that, there were a bunch of apps that you would expect to get really good ratings. You know, the ones that are built for secure stuff, like the silent circle stuff that are in the new ultra secure black phone, you know, crypto cat, stuff like that, that are made for the hardcore, you know, communication privacy geeks. So Brad, uh, so Brad, I have to ask you then, I mean, which messaging app or apps are you using? I mean, it's, we, we've got all the information at our fingertips. Does this keep you from using Snapchat or, or I don't know, Skype? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I actually, 90% of my communication is on Twitter. <laughs> so, right. uh, but, uh, when I need to securely communicate, I use PGP tools, mm -hmm. which according to the study actually did really, really well. They missed out on two criteria, one of which again, being present not of code. Uh, another net just for family, I use Facebook, uh, messaging. And since, you know, I'm not communicating, you know, my tax details or trying to overthrow the government over Facebook, I don't really concern myself too much about talking about how the Patriots did want the Broncos last week. Well, <laughs> at least we know a little bit more about our options. Brad Charkis, thanks so much for joining us. Brad is a senior writer over at PC World, and we're always delighted to have him here on TN2. Before you go, remind folks where they can keep up with your work. They can find me at PC World, including Macworld and TechHive and Greenbot, some sister sites these days, as well as the PC World Digital Edition for tablets. Excellent. Thanks so much, Brad. See you around. All right. Finally, Microsoft and CNN have a deal where CNN anchors are using Surface Pro 3 tablets at, you know, their news desks, kind of like this one, right? But during U.S. election coverage on Tuesday night, some viewers started snapping photos and posting them online of iPads hiding behind propped up Surface Pro 3s. Well... That's not such a big deal, right? Eh, this has happened before. Microsoft also has a five-year, $400 million deal with the NFL that says that coaching staff must use its tablets on the field or no tablets at all. Reportedly, Microsoft had to remind announcers to call the tablet Surface Pro 3s instead of iPads because, you know, they're not the same thing. It's a little embarrassing, if nothing else. You know, speaking of iPads, before we go, remember the mobile video app Vidi? Well, Full Screen, which is the company that bought Vidi for $20 million earlier this year, says the service will be shutting down on uh, December 15th. The Vidi app was removed from the App Store officially and the Google Play Store on November 4th, but it's still working. Anybody who already has installed the app has until December 15th to use it before it shuts down. And Vidi used to claim 50 million users and was seeing 500,000 new registrations per day at one point. But you might recall the service lost a big amount of traffic following a change to Facebook's algorithm, which used to promote it heavily, and of course suffered from competing apps like Twitter's Vine and Instagram video. RIP Vidi, you were a true pioneer. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every day at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss Tech News Today. That's our morning news broadcast at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. We got you covered in the morning and the nights. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.